uh, during the, the first um, the first few weeks of the year. Of course, we're in the school fees week, so Gromaya uh, Shikakra. Well, the final newspaper, no decision taken to increase transport fares, GRTC. First guy founder urges government to consider two sessions of dialysis on NHIS. Tobinko donates 3.9 million Ghana CDs to headquarters to uh, pro Police Professional Standards Bureau. And also, support to agribusiness will remain a priority, ADB board chair. President launches 6.1 million uh, Ghana CDs fund, commissions virtual medical center, and new OPD for the police. The Daily Guide newspaper says five fire officers Hot over missing 30,000 cities at accident scene. Senate increases benefits 10%. Transport Council tackles 40% fare increment. And President launches 6.1 million Ghana cities police medical fund. The Daily Graphic, replacing aging pharma population. 500 youth receive support. They are first batch. 6.1 million uh, Ghana cities police medical emergency fund launched. And also academic calendar to be out soon, Dr. Educhum. On the back page, Stars coach charges players to work harder. Pencil show of Stars comeback. And Nigeria Super Eagle shock Egypt 1-0. My guest this morning, Godwin Eduji Tamakul. He's a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. Uh, his party sent him here. And also, uh, Pius Enam Hachide, he is the boss at the National Youth Authority. He's here on the ticket of the NPP. His party sent him here as well. Gentlemen, good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Good morning, John. I've been seeing you, Pius. Yes. Uh, this year. Happy New Year. How are you doing? Many, many <coughs> happy returns. And given that this is my first time on your set mm. this year, please allow me to uh, convey the compliments of the season to your good self, mm. to my brother Iduji to my constituents, the good people of the Sojaman constituency, mm -hmm. Enum, Busu, Frank Edria, Atimpuku, all the way to Jekiti, mm -hmm. uh, and, and all. We wish them well. We are hopeful that this year, the dividends uh, of this uh, democratic experiment that we are in, mm -hmm. uh, we shall all bear the fruits uh, and, 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 and share in the dividends. Kazo. Good morning. Uh, good morning, and uh, good morning to my brother Pius. Mm. Um, you know, today happens to be your friend's uh, birthday, Which Falon. One? Oh, okay. Yeah. No one Falon. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, my former friend. No, you're okay. Okay, let's maintain <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Happy birthday. She'll come and fight me. <laughs> I, I know, know, right? Happy birthday <clears throat> to her. And uh, <clears throat> like uh, my brother indicated, as far as the NDC is concerned, mm. a Sujaman is locked down. For Ampeminyako. Why not Pius? We are not there. And, and, and <laughs> Polanza had tried it, mm. and many have. And uh, it's locked down. I, I can see his spirited efforts, his sudden visits <laughs> to the constituency. <laughs> but you know, that place is more or less like my way, or because my mom is a pebe, so always right to Busu, mm. you know. <laughs> so, Bios, yes. uh, you first win the party primaries first. <laughs> That's the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> Champion Dako is, uh, is well settled. I hear you. Let's, no, uh, but Johnny, yeah. I mean, Ampim, Ampim is a good friend, he's mm. a fantastic uh, man. Uh, I think that he has done his due for the people of a Suja mine. He's not uh, done we yet. Can, we, can, we can be grateful ah, for him. You can't tell but, him but when I think he that the time has come for him to oh, make way for, for fresh impetus. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, let's take a reaction from the former NMC boss, uh, Nana Penting. He had uh, some reactions to, to give regarding the media capacity enhancement program, which was announced uh, on Monday. I would have preferred all kinds of such level engagement with the media in terms of training, capacity building and all that to be undertaken by the National Media Commission. And it is also up to the media houses to maintain those high standards. Unfortunately today, I don't think many media houses go through that kind of rigorous training when they take people, I don't know. But the result, what we see, would probably argue that it's not taking place in all media houses. 
The former NMC chairman entreated media houses to have constant in-house training for their journalists to promote their independence. He recommended a regulatory framework for media houses and journalists. You can have all the training in the world, but if those who control the levels of power in the media want to do the wrong thing, Journalists are almost like either you leave, you resign, you go and do something else, or you do, if you want to remain, then you do what they say. So we need to have a system that is total, that encompasses the entire sweep of media, that is owners, regulator, and um, journalists, and all that. Otherwise, um, no, no matter how glamorous the training would be, uh, I'm afraid we may not have much of a change. He said the NMC has various codes, rules and regulations, and if followed, would have ensured high journalistic standards. So that's not happening there, but Nana says it should not be your job as government to be doing this capacity enhancement, but it should have come from the NMC. What do you say? Do you agree with him? Well, thank you very much, uh, Johnny. Um, the attitude of this administration is to welcome all shades of opinion mm. uh, because that is how we can synthesize and crystallize the best of ideas. So the former boss of the NMC has some issues that he seeks to articulate and it is important that we pay attention. Uh, however, I feel that it is also important that he pays attention to uh, both the history mm. and the genesis of the media capacity enhancement program. For the record, this is not uh, an effort that is being implemented at the state level. Uh, of course, the vision was generated at the state level. Mm. Uh, the Minister of Information, who himself uh, I can proudly say he's an industry player mm. and with whom I worked uh, as deputy. Uh, he conceived the idea uh, knowing at first hand the challenges and the former NMC boss again speaks to the challenges that uh, the Ghanaian media faces, issues about capacity building uh, and so on. And he says in his own words uh, that they are not doing that and that it is either you leave or you do what you are told. Mm -hmm. and, and these are some really huge indictments uh, on the Ghanaian media industry. Mm -hmm. And bearing all this history in mind, and also knowing that the media plays an important part uh, in our social, economic, and even political development as a country, uh, the minister's vision was that let us facilitate a cre and create a conducive environment mm -hmm. within which the media can thrive. And let us create the Broadway to capacity enhancement. And so what the state's uh, responsibility has been largely is to, uh, I mean, create the vision and also importantly find the resources. But I do know that in the, the, the skills gap analysis, mm -hmm. in the uh, design of curriculum, and however the program is going to run, this was something that was entirely done by the industry players and leaders themselves, like the Prim Park, like the Ghana Journalist Association, like the uh, um, GIBA, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana Independent mm -hmm. Broadcasters Association, and of course, spearheaded by the National Media Commission. Mm -hmm. And, and so the role of the state is actually diminished. Uh, it is not something that we are is doing. It? We are not the ones, uh, going, the state, and I mm. say it's, the state is not the one going to do the selection of the beneficiaries of the program, for instance. Mm -hmm. The state is not determining what uh, skills to look at mm. uh, and so on. These are things that the professionals in the industry themselves, for instance, the communication uh, trainers Association, mm. and there are some of them in GIJ, there are some of them in the School of Communications in Legon. Mm. They put together the curriculum. What the state has committed to do 
is to lead the funding attempt because mm -hmm. it's going to take some money. The other leg is the uh, the scholarships uh, that journalists can enjoy as a function of this program. Mm -hmm. The state has also endeavored to lead the effort of raising the money. And so if there were any fears uh, that the state will be involved and the state will determine content, mm -hmm. the state will determine who benefits, and it can then become an avenue to coerce people uh, and to um, uh, get them to to a certain line, uh, then I think that... What, what uh, do you say to those who say these 250 people, I mean, if it's done... In 2022, 2023, 24, uh, and you get 250, 252, that's 750. What do you say to those who say this is a subtle way to recruit PR people for government or press agency for government? But that's exactly what I've explained, that the 250 people are not even going to be selected by government. What they are taught, the government does not control. Who mm -hmm. teaches them government does not control. Mm -hmm. Government controls or government intends to uh, facilitate the funding, so the thing is being managed by the industry players themselves mm. and their funding requirements. Government will now then take the lead to find the resources so mm. that this, this can go on. I think that we can all agree that this is a useful exercise. Mm. We can all agree that there are gaps, serious gaps, uh, and uh, the boss, the former NMC boss, mm. goes to the extent of even talking about some regulation for the media. Mm. And, and I think that it is only a testament to the fact that there are many, many issues of mm. capacity. Mm. In Accra, we may be fine. Mm. And even in Accra, we may not all be fine. There are many, many uh, media practitioners mm. in Accra whose work uh, has been criticized so fairly. Mm. Their work, their output is so suspect. Mm. And so uh, we do know. But even if you go outside of Accra, mm -hmm. the situation may even be worse. Mm. And so, we have to be global in our view of this matter. It's a serious matter. Mm. And, and for us, uh, I think that this is a movement forward, unlike what we used to uh, witness in times past, where material, uh, uh, if you may, inducements mm -hmm. were offered to journalists mm -hmm. from the state. You remember uh, some time ago during the uh, NDC administration, uh, some laptops, and it became an issue between... Mm -hmm. Uh, my very good friend and brother, Mr. Standogbe, mm. uh, and, uh, and some media players in this country, mm -hmm. where uh, some X amount of money was supposed to have been used in acquiring and distributing of laptops and other material inducements mm. to journalists. That can be interpreted mm -hmm. to mean uh, that you are coercing or inducing journalists. Mm. But in a situation where you are just finding money for the uh, the uh, umbrella bodies, the mother bodies mm -hmm. of the journalists themselves, to be able to run this program, mm -hmm. uh, I of, think of that what, of what use will be enhanced capacity if the journalists are not paid well? Yeah, but of, of the, what use will it be? Well, it, 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 is the government uh, the, the, putting its mind to that? We have, I, and I remember that in my time as deputy minister, the minister used to talk about this. You cannot have a situation where journalists in some instances are not paid, mm -hmm. and in some instances paid pay chances, 300 cities, 500 cities. Those journalists, you are only setting them up to be corrupted by people with dubious uh, intents mm -hmm. and, 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 and so on. And so you find a politician making friends with journalists who, by the way, are not being paid properly, not by the state, but by their uh, private media owners, mm -hmm. because we are now operating a liberalized media environment, and for instance, media general is not private, it's not mm -hmm. state, it's private. And so if media owners do not pay, but they put the mic in front of the journalist who is not paid, who is angry and has to feed, mm -hmm. okay? Irrespective of free SHS, irrespective of all of the uh, fantastic interventions mm -hmm. that we are seeing, mm -hmm. people still need some money in their pockets. Mm -hmm. And so if you are not, people are not being paid and you put the mic in front of them, they will say and do all kinds of things. Their real and true motivation, mm -hmm. maybe the inducements that they are getting from uh, uh, politicians, either in or out of mm -hmm. government. And so I agree with you that the issue mm -hmm. of payments mm -hmm. of salaries or wages or compensations of any sort to journalists should be a matter of concern. And maybe as a sequel to these general conversations around capacity enhancement, 
we must begin to focus also on the, on the financial you. Uh, motivations. But okay. you see, Johnny, we are in a country where mm. when government wants to even enforce the rules mm -hmm. relative to the media, we, those who are and ought to be fair players, mm. we who uh, uh, observe the laws rightfully, mm. for instance, in the matter of the renewal of uh, the uh, frequency, mm. not, not, not licenses, frequency authorization, right. because you don't need a license to practice, Absolutely. but mm. the frequency authorization, the, the, the media general, the station that you work for, mm. they, they obey the law strictly. Mm. They, they, when the uh, authorization is about expiring, they make applications and they get a renewal of the authorization. Mm. Surprisingly, we who obey the law and work, when others are being told to obey the law, mm. we say, no, 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 don't do that. It amounts to something else. And now we are back to the same point. We are now even talking about payments uh, or, or, and compensation for, for, for media practitioners. Mm. I hope and pray that when the time comes and government takes the bull by the horn and insists mm. that media owners should not just be driven by profits they may, they may make from advertising and so on, but that they should apply some of those monies mm -hmm. to uh, paying properly uh, the people who do the real job. Nobody will come around to accuse us again of uh, all the, the negativities that uh, came when we tried to enforce the rules of... Council, step in for me. So this is what the former NMC boss says. He says he would have wished that the NMC would be the one leading the charge and not the state in trying to train and he gives reason for it the question of influence and all of that which may arise what do you say obviously when it comes to matters involving the media you'd want to defer superior knowledge and experience to uh mr appington mm. yes mm. nana he's done considerably well in those sphere mm. the suspicion of influence is heightened because of the character mm. of the people that we are dealing with. You see, in every democracy, there are established accounting or accountability institutions or agencies. Some are governmental, mm. some are private. Now you note that in the superior wisdom of the makers of the 1992 constitution, mm. they decided that at all material time, the media ought to have a certain level of autonomy because of the critical role they play as the watchdog. Now, we also do know that the media also engages in the areas of informing mm -hmm. and entertaining, right? Education as well. Education. Mm -hmm. So, unless, of course, there are deficiencies, then you'd want to intervene. Ordinarily, there shouldn't be anything wrong with building the capacities of people. I mean, even as lawyers, we do what we call continuous legal education. Other institutions allow that. But you see, when you have a government that is opposed to any form of accountability, then any intervention from them to provide capacity building to the media would already be seen with a lot of suspicion and mistrust. And I make this point because, you see, <coughs> our friends today in government have conducted themselves in a manner mm. that has not made them friends of the media any longer. How have they done And I'll tell you this. Mm. You see, whilst in opposition, the MPP, for whatever reason, heralded the works of Manasseh Azuri and all of those individuals. Now, with the benefit of power, this same media men, right, mm. now decides to do the very thing that they did to the elsewhere NDC administration. Mm. And in some cases, some of them have to go into exile. <laughs> Look, it is what documented the efforts by hype men and assigns of this government to hound Manasseh out of this country. What was his crime? He's done a documentary on 
paramilitary groups using the former seat of government, the castle, mm. for their operations. <clears throat> government now decided to lodge a complaint against him to the National Media Commission, among other things. And now directly, he was hounded out. In fact, the Media Foundation for West Africa indicated the likes of Professor Kakari. And these are MPP storehouts. Kakari's association with MPP is not in doubt. Right? So if individuals like that will begin to even have a problem with a political party that they have been associated with, mm. it tells you the decay and the lack of consistency from our brothers. That's, that's one example. Two, we were in this country when the president told us, the IEA debate, mm. that he was going to use the ANAS principle to fight corruption. Correct. Mm. Today, ANAS is one of, quote unquote, public enemy to this administration. How is that? This is what documented. Look, when ANAS did the expose on the um, number the 12, number 12 mm. the lead investigator, Ahmed Swali, was brutally murdered at the time when um, uh, uh, Swali was a person of interest to be protected by the Republic. He was brutally murdered. What has happened to that case today? The police are investigating. It has become a cold case. What form of investigation? Our people say prevention is better than cure, right? Mm. Ahmed ought to have been protected under the witness protection regime, plus or minus. We were there until the man was brutally murdered. Then today you come and say you want to build what capacity? Which part of the journalistic work is lacking that requires the intervention of the states? Which part of their work? So yes. I am saying that this current intervention by the Akufuado Baumia administration mm. is one that ought to be seen with suspicion. This is a government that puts over 6 million Ghana cities down for media communication engagement. You recall in the last budget reading. So it has been a question of inducement, inducement, inducement. Well, they, and, they, and, the information minister, sorry, information minister, for example, said that the notion that journalists have capacity uh, on every subject matter from archaeology to zoology because they have the microphone or the cameras is false. And you see, those are one see, of the things that see, they want to see, use see, capacity building to see. deal with. If you tell an institution that generates 25 people for me, for the purpose of this training, mm -hmm. right? You don't decide to media general who, for instance, they should send for that program. So media general looks at this pool of talent and resources and say, you are the one. It lies not in his mouth to decide whether a journalist, why, in any case, mm -hmm. my very good friend, my learned friend, Kujo Opon Kroma, why? When he was on Joy FM, what skill set did he come with? He started with BCOM, right? Mm. From UCC. Mm. His initial training was in bachelor's in economics. That's right. Uh, 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 comment, sorry. Transitioned and became a fine journalist. So this whole idea that some people demonstrate knowledge from archaeology to zoology, what formal training did he have in <laughs> journalism? I will not sit on this platform and say a person like, uh, 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 what shall I say, Kwekubaku, <coughs> mm. lacks journalistic skills because he does not have A, B, C, D. No. He's demonstrated with time. You may disagree mm. with his form of journalism, mm. but he has demonstrated the capacity to do the work, to inform and entertain. You may disagree. And you see, this whole idea that government must intervene, it's like the Donald Trump administration calling CNN to bring someone <coughs> for them to train the person, or Fox News. Mm. The Biden administration asking that Fox News should bring a reporter for the purposes of training. It is completely dubious. Mm. This administration cannot stand any form of democratic accounting. And I make this point because, you see, <coughs> our president, mm. our president, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, cannot stand any form 
That, that's not of, fair. That's no, not fair. To I, I will tell you this. That's not fair to him. I will tell you this. Mm. He cannot stand any form of democratic accounting. And look, one of the things that I will plead with you mm. to look at carefully is that democracy tries when people are sure that the executive will be held to account. Mm. And so we have built what we call democratic accounting agencies. Now, when you have a president <coughs> Sorry. who deliberately puts persons, ideologues, MPP ideologues, into institutions that holds government accountable, they churn out rules that make it look like, oh, this institution is supposed to be independent. So whatever comes from there is supposed to be an independent reflection. Which institutions are you talking about? <laughs> Let me give you a classic one. Give me. In this country, mm. we are supposed to say that the Electoral <laughs> Commission is independent. In fact, that is what the Constitution says. Mm. Now, when you put ideologues there, they do what the president demands. My brother here, hold on, well, 30 seconds. <coughs> My brother here, ask him. We all have, until recently, Ochi, we're all voterians, correct? What happened to the people of Sa? Over a year. It's simply because today, <laughs> our friends in the MPP believe that if you create a constituency for Sa and they go into an election, it is going to be an obvious win. How? Hold on. The current numerical dynamics in Parliament, 138, 138, if you put in Sa again, it will change the dynamics, right? And that alone is what this government cannot stand. If not, what does it take to create a constituency? A constitutional instrument that has a lifespan of 21 days. You have a constituency. You do a by-election. It's been over a year. But, but then when you say ideologues, for example, do you know the electoral commissioner to be a member of the NPP? She had never denied that. My uh, 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 boss man <coughs> has <coughs> never denied that. <laughs> they have not. I hear you. And yeah, my I... very good brother, yeah, yeah. uh, Pius's laughter, mm. that's not this proof. No, no, no. Bro. I, I, this I hear you. fundamental Bro. issue. So Bro. this government cannot mm. simply stand accountability so, and so, just want to wrap so what, the so what, you, so what do you see? You think that this, fact, this is conduct what? is even an affront to the 1992 constitution. How so? Quickly. The, the, independent, the independence of the media. Mm. Why? If you work for an agency, mm. an institution, the institution should be able to identify the skill set where you need further <laughs> training and provide you with that. What's your business, government? Yours is to rule, govern. Johnny. Hey, yes, take, take I, I a minute am, on I'm, this I'm, so I'm you can take a minute. Scandalized so we can and, move and on. I'm greatly <laughs> scandalized and sad. <laughs> and, and you see, my brothers in the NDC, uh, they would want to politicize everything. Mm. And so they will run away from the matter under interrogation and they will jump to Sal and they will bring in uh, the unfortunate death of Ahmed Swale. They want to press emotive buttons. But you did the say you brought in Stan Dogbe and uh, laptops exactly. and money. I was you, you when went you there started first. on that line. Sorry, you went there you first. You saw my note. Johnny. Johnny. So when you went I there, mean, that's why I allowed I, him. I, I, <coughs> no, I don't started even, to allow, allow, my allow, my don't, allow don't, him. Don't, don't even justify your <laughs> editorial discretion to me. Mm. Because it's clear right. to me what you do. No, no, no. So no, don't no, go there. No, no, no. Don't go there. Don't impugn motive. No, no, no. I'm saying that you are the host. Because you went to... Why you allow somebody to do something, I don't even want to Okay, so I allowed you to do... You to talk about Stan Dogbe, laptop and But he didn't complain. Well, he didn't. Yeah, but I'm complaining. So don't explain to me why you allowed it. So let him complain. Don't worry, don't worry. Thank you. I'm saying that... Make progress. I, because he doesn't have any matter mm. or he doesn't have any points to make relative to the matter and the, and the interrogation. Okay. He goes into area, SAL, electoral commission, mm. then he jumps to the unfortunate death of Ahmed Swali. He has very little, if any, mm. relation with what we are doing, ah. what we are discussing here. When really? I discuss really? what we when I discuss the giving of laptops, <coughs> I was assuring you that this is different from material inducements. Mm. And I gave you material evidence of the inducement, mm. which is the offering of laptops and money mm. to journalists. That's what I was dealing with when I was giving you the evidence and you, of and material inducements. And you don't suppose, that, you don't suppose so, that the death of Ahmed Swale 
even though Ahmed Swale had capacity and showed it by his lead investigator role in the number 12, which went to CAF, went to FIFA, GFA, and all of that. Even the presidency had cause to ask the police to institute an investigation. You don't think that he had capacity, but then the question about media freedom and protection is key. Because if you have capacity and you don't feel protected, how do you practice? In, 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 in <laughs> fact, it's a misfire, it's a misconception. Mm. Anybody who propose mm. such a theory, okay. the fundamental uh, uh, misconception is that you are, you are attempting to link the unfortunate death mm. of Ahmed Suwali to number 12. Mm. There's no basis as we speak for you to do that. Okay. It's a wild guess, uneducated, mm. unscientific. Mm. And so, <clears throat> so it is still pressing the emotive buttons. Mm. It's an unfortunate death. But I'm saying that you are assuming without any basis mm. that the, it is, the man's it photo, is the man's photo was reckless on that TV. You are, you are even derailing, but I'm still I'm saying not to derailing. you that I'm still saying to you that there is no basis. Mm. There's no basis. If you, you may if, you may you may you may feel that mm. the sequencing the sequencing can make for these logical conclusions mm -hmm. in your view. But I'm saying that that is narrow minded. Mm. Yeah, because as we speak, relax, because relax. as we speak, mm. you were right when you said that the police are investigating. Mm. There are many times that I personally thought mm. that one death was attributable to one particular incident only for investigations to show mm -hmm. that the death or that crime was attributable to another set of incidences, which I may not be privy to. Okay. So let's not <clears> jump <throat> the gun. And that's why I'm saying that it's a misconception. Mm. It is uneducated. It's unscientific. Okay. But the, the, see, the family of Ahmed Swale this morning uh, will be listening to you and will be thinking whether or not the state is concerned about them and whether or not they are not free to make those linkages as well. No, I mean, I cannot <clears throat> speak for the family. Mm. I, 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 but I'm saying I'm assuring the family that if I were a member of the Ahmed Swale mm. family, I'm interested in the scientific real basis mm -hmm. for the unfortunate death of my brother. Mm. I will not be swayed by desperate politicians who want to take and do advantage of that unfortunate death mm. and link it to mm. something without any basis. If I were a member of the don't, family, don't you think that, that the, would be the, my position. Don't you think that the long wait is fueling some of these... Uh... But Johnny, <clears throat> this is a police investigation. You have no training in it. I have none. Eduji does not have. Mm. We cannot be here and suggest uh, how investigations... I know he's mm. talking about cold files. And I was just watching <coughs> uh, 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 DSTV the other time. And I learned that there are some murder cases particularly, even in the developed United States of America, that took 45 years to resolve. Okay. I'm not suggesting that you should take that. Okay. But the police investigate, look, there are, there are journalists who died before Ahmed, mm. when the NDC was in power. Their killers have still not been found. Mm. I'm not, so let's not do that. Let's allow the police to do their investigations. But coming back on course and dealing with quickly, this, my brother, so that we can is that, through. you see... I think that he should just take, uh, uh, my brother, he should take his time to uh, acquaint himself with what is being discussed. Mm. Otherwise, all this thing <laughs> about uh, Ahmed Swali uh, and uh, Manasseh. Manasseh, you we had problems. Him out. We, we, we had problems with one particular work with Manasseh. And so, because we are supposed to be in a democracy, because mm. we are supposed to be friends of the media, even if the media get it wrong, we are not supposed to talk about you it. You hounded him I mean, him this out. is a... This you are not talking please, about please, it. You hounded him out. Allow, allow him. Let's, so we have what to switch. I want us to switch to do? something else. We went to the NMC. We didn't go and shit bomb like you guys did. You hounded we him did out. We did not. We did not. We offered him, him police protection. Ooh. I was involved. I was deputy minister at the time. It was we offered him threats. We off, no, what, what, what threats? After he left... It West was only when he told us that he was under threat, we gave him a police of his choice. his journalistic Of his choice. We allowed him to choose. We gave him a... Analytic work. But I'm saying that. I mean, if you guys threaten him, how are we supposed to prevent that? Oh. If you go and threaten him. The man him, does an expose. Ah, but you people, what can you not do? Government leasing. You people, so, the desperate as you are. There no, was NDC that threatened I'm not saying Manasseh. that. Manasseh. Anybody, <coughs> anybody who threatens that, Manasseh. That sounds scientific. Okay? Anybody who threatens uh, Manasseh. Once Manasseh brought it to the attention of the government, mm. what did the government do? The responsible thing. We offered him police protection were you and of his choice. Were you able to verify that there was indeed threats well, on his well, life? Well, well, the man came to complain about it. I'm saying, were you able even to, before we did you, the You are talking about scientific and educated we were basis. Not going to, we were not going to verify the threat before we offered protection. 
we offered protection immediately the complaint came okay even as the police were investigating i'm saying that so w when you finished offering him that well, you may you may have to speak to the police on that oh, you, but you said you were involved but i'm so saying that involved in the himself in, was in angry the with that expose Look, i'm saying that Please. i'm saying i was angry i was angry with it uh, with, with it's not an expose mm. it was some shamb shamb shambolic work it was nothing close to what he did with the bribery for the, the Mahama Ford Gate scandal. Okay. It was nothing or anything close to that. With ABA, and nobody, ABA, and nobody uh, uh, ever threatened him. Allow me, please. <laughs> he never left oh, for South Africa. Oh, say that. It was because that work was not shambolic. This was shambolic. No. Okay. okay. So we, we need so to move on, gentlemen. First of all, no. We, we need to move on. No, you said you give me one. We, we need to move on. Oh, but you get one minute. <laughs> no. I, after all this interjection, Pio. Edigy, Edigy. Pio. I am not pious. Edigy. No. What Edigy. I'm addressing Edigy. him. Edigy. I am Edigy. saying, Edigy. but Edigy, Pio. let me have my time. Pios, relax. Let me have my time. Allah, Allah, Allah. In this country. But Johnny, are, are you going to take my time and give it to him? Hold on. But you, let me finish. The administration, Edigy, had obtained a very dubious distinction. As the houndest of journalists. That is not true. Because that cannot I, be true. Look, I am saying that, that cannot be true. When the president, what are you talking about? When you the are beating journalists when the in front of the president, leaves, the, 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 Mr. Stanley, the, he Mr. never Stanley did. was slapping never journalists. Did. He never did. Eh? What, 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 what punishment or sanction? What, 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 Mm. Uh, 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 to tax associated Edigy. with the MPP. Edigy. Mm. Edigy. A journalist finish. uncovers that. Then you, you say that that work your is symbolic. It is this, true. I'm saying to you that. Today, as we speak, by okay, reason of that, do you know that by oh. reason of uh, Manasseh's work, mm. those tax, paramilitary But the NMC had a ruling on are this no matter. longer there. But the NMC that had a ruling. That is journalist does. And government was not pleased. I'm saying that and if, if the government is not very much. the government goes to the NMC, uh, that's what we do. Send your thoughts and comments in. Let's uh, switch now. Yesterday, 500 youth were promised uh, of, of, uh, to, to receive support in the well, NIEP. An initial batch of 500 youth farmers, processors, and agricultural technology developers across the country are being supported to use technology and other innovative ways to engage in smart farming. Under the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, their support will also train the youth in modern agriculture and help them generate appreciable incomes to meet their personal and business needs through farming as a commercial business venture. They uh, is that the youth innovation, uh, innovative agriculture. The program is expected to replace the aging population in farming as it trains the next generation of young and smart farmers to ensure agriculture productivity and food security. Pais. So this is uh, another initiative announced by the government, obviously aimed at reducing youth unemployment. Uh, off the top of my head, I can count a couple of them. Is it really impacting the numbers of unemployed young people? Is it reducing great, it? Great, greatly, <laughs> greatly, greatly. And, and these are great times to be mm. young people uh, in Ghana. Mm. I mean, we have a president who is very youthful at heart. It's not mm. the mantra of mm. shouting, I'm youthful, or carrying an iPad or an iPhone mm -hmm. that makes you youth loving. Mm. It is the quality of interventions that you roll out that impact and benefit the youth positively and beneficially. That is what the youth want. And mm. we see in Anna Kufado a very youthful president. Why? Is the president mm. who is paying school fees for many, many young persons who otherwise would have been at home and mm. would have not gotten secondary education. <clears throat> He's a president who has brought you start. And you start is supposed to uh, create over one million jobs within the next three years because we are injecting 10 billion cities through the you start. As okay, it hasn't started. Has yeah, but, uh, yeah, it hasn't started. We we are hopeful that uh, our brothers in the NDC when finally but, but parliament. You start was named Youth Bank. It was supposed to have started last year. No, youth this is you start. It's, it is youth in paragraph. Bank, the finance minister it, it read is on, it. It is on paragraph. 92, read, read page the, 92, paragraph 414. Fires, read the 2020 budget. You will see Youth Bank. It says it was going to create 3 million jobs in uh, 1 million jobs in 3 years. So Johnny, Then in 2022, and I'm just giving you basis. <laughs> then the finance minister said, if you read it, it says that it's been renamed as 
you you start. No, it's, I'm, I have it. Can, can, you, read it? can, you, read I, it? can I, you read it? Can you read it? Can you read it? Can you read it? The You Start Initiative is an initiative under the CARES program which will create employment opportunities for one million young people in the next three years. The mm -hmm. initiative will support the training, funding, and promotion. And I'm quoting from the from, yeah, go ahead. From, from, go ahead. from the go budget. Ahead. It goes on and on and on. Go ahead. No, I so want you to finish. It is a long. You want me to read the budget? So that here? we see the youth bank. <laughs> where the youth bank is, Johnny. Uh, I haven't seen any youth bank. You, if you have it, you can show it to me. But oh, let you me don't just, know that Mr. Ferreira announced youth bank. In the in 2022 budget. 2020 budget. John, you are inviting me to discuss ne this intervention, which is uh, traceable to 2022 budget. And I'm saying to you, you are taking me back. Go ahead. Well, sometimes I feel you, that when we, are, when we are giving you the truly re and, and really unprecedented achievements of mm. Akufuado mm. and the MPP government, mm. you become uncomfortable no. and you drive us into other areas. I am saying, I am, allow us to I am flow. saying that. Allow me to flow, I'm, my brother. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying what, that. Allow what, me to flow. What the deal? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm coming. He's I'm, coming. He's no, no, no. He's comfortable with your incompetence. Bios, you bios. Will allow me to flow. Bios. Sorry, it's interjecting me. So can I can I ask you a question? Listen I'm, to the good news. I'm, I'm supposed to ask you a question. I'm saying that. Enjoy the good news. You I'm, are youth yourself. I'm saying that. Well, I'm employed. Well, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but you are still youth. I'm saying that. Pay the number of people. <laughs> I'm saying that. I heard Mr. Foriata read the 2020 budget. He talked about only you know the things you hear. But it let me in, go on. It is in the hands that, and he talked about youth bank in 2020 to be implemented in 2021, to create 1 million jobs in three years. Then in 2021, we are told that works had, had started, but it's been renamed Youth Start. I'm just giving you information. No. That's uh, all. Uh, thank you for this information. But uh, You don't like it? No. Okay. It is, a, it is a deliberate distraction. I hear you. So, so the point is that mm -hmm. this project that 500 young people are going to receive support is one of the several interventions. And having read the budget, the 2022 budget, Johnny, you realize that there are not less than 20 interventions mm. that are geared towards solving the problem of youth unemployment. And I sit at an authority, the National Youth Authority, mm -hmm. where we are supposed to coordinate the overall and holistic development of the youth. And so we have taken particular and keen interest in these matters. Mm. And we are excited. And we, this is not uh, an MPP appointee speaking, no. This is a state actor, the CEO of the National Youth Authority. We are excited mm. at the levels of increased investments that we are seeing in youth interventions. Mm. Our only concern is that the implementing agencies do a thorough and good job. Okay. And that is why we at the National Youth Authority, we are not going to relent. We are going to ensure that our constituents, our publics, the ones aged between 15 and 35, mm -hmm. who are defined according to the National Youth Policy mm. as youth, who we are uh, 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 accountable to as an authority, mm -hmm. we are going to work with the NEIP, we are going to work with Maslock, we are going to work with the GEA, mm -hmm. which, by the way, was dead and defunct under the NDC. They used to be called the MBSSI. Now, if you go uh, to see and you see what is happening in that space, the entrepreneurial space, because we believe that even though we have created many, many jobs in the public space, the absorptive capacity, as far as employment is concerned, mm -hmm. is in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And government is deliberately channeling some huge resources into private hands so that we can create the enabling environment. For instance, the 1D1F. Johnny, are you aware that 48 of the factories mm -hmm. are purely youth-owned? The, the, the shareholders of these companies are below 35 years. 48, deliberate government policy. Mm -hmm. We are working to get another set <coughs> of uh, 45 companies uh, that are still in the pipeline. And we are working with the government to ensure that more and more young persons... So, Johnny, escape the NDC mm. uh, or the uh, opposition mm. uh, 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 trapping. Come to the, uh, the, 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 the highway of development. Are, are you recruiting get, to, to get, get a party card? Get, not a party card. <laughs> Just come and get part of the 1D1F. Mm. Uh, the, you, you are a young man. Mm. There's an opportunity for young people to own businesses in this country. Mm. Uh, and so... Uh, instead of uh, I, own, I own a few though, so I'm yeah, not, so you are I, doing I, well. I just just practice. So you, so you, are, you so so you are the people we want to support. Mm. You see, your kind is what we want because you are creating jobs. So that's what we are. So, we are so doing. Pius, comment. I, I'm reading here. Beneficiaries of the program will receive sums ranging from twenty thousand to two hundred thousand as flexible loan facilities, payable within three to five years at an interest rate of ten percent per annum. You mentioned MBSSI. Mm. There are some who applied for MBSSI loans yes. and still have not gotten them. There are many, many who got. You see, resources are not an infinite uh, supply. 
uh, everybody would want some support, but we can only do that as uh, this much. Mm. So it's in batches. Mm. So those who applied and they didn't get, they should apply another time. Mm. And gradually, majority or all of us will be served. We are unable, honestly speaking, Johnny, mm -hmm. if I came to say to you that with all the 20 interventions laid out, uh, 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 laid out in the uh, Ajinkwa budget, mm -hmm. every person, every young person in this country is going to be touched directly. I'll be lying to you. And we are not dishonest people, mm -hmm. not in the MPP, maybe in the NDC, mm -hmm. but we are not dishonest. So I can agree mm -hmm. that, well, we may not have had everybody applying for MBSSI mm -hmm. getting the support that they applied mm -hmm. for. But other people have gotten, and that should motivate and encourage us that our time will come. Okay. But I can, I think that around the table, mm. uh, uh, we can all agree that this is a good initiative, supporting 500 young persons to do uh, mechanized agriculture, okay? Mm. Modern agriculture, not cutlass and whole agriculture. Mm. It's a good development. And that the NEIP is a good project, mm. and that it used to be yes under the NDC, well, but when, they didn't do when, when nothing. Is, when is this? Starting? They didn't do when, when anything. Is, when is this starting? So, if I'm a young person, for example, when can I walk in and go and apply for twenty? Hopefully, hopefully, it's my understanding that this is part of the U, the U start. The U start will start in March. Okay. And so uh, this will start in March, but I just give you. And some information also mm. that yes, youth and uh, entrepreneurial support mm. used to exist under the NDC. Mm. It was led by the then Adentan MP, mm. uh, Honorable, uh, my friend who went to cry after the Brazil thing. Oh, oh you remember his name now? I don't remember his oh, name. Eduji, a former Adentan MP. The coordinator of the YES program. Would you go ahead and do your submission? They didn't do anything, mm. okay? But under the MPP, you, you, you heard about the presidential speech. Mm. You heard about the support to disabled. Mm -hmm. Now you are hearing about 500 young per persons. John Kuma, Honorable John Kuma, mm. was then uh, yeah. the head of NEIP. And so we believe in the Ghanaian can but, do but Papa, all of this is hinged on the E-Levy. Because the finance minister, if I heard him right, said that the E-Levy proceeds You're right. will be used for the youth start. You're right. And that's why now we the want e, the that's e why we want the, the e levy that's why we want, we want. The, the, the opposition is telling you that the, because they hold they are holding the, the youth of this country hostage. They are holding us to ransom mm. the NDC. They are it's a zero sum mentality they have. Mm. If the MPP wins the NDC loses. Let's deny them resources. Mm. If they get the money the young people of this country will be supported and mm. they will be happy with the MPP and they may vote for the MPP. So we have the numbers. Let's frustrate it. Let's cattle it. They are holding us uh, hostage. Mm. That's the NDC. And that's why we are hoping so and praying so that when finally mm. the speaker returns to take his chair mm. okay and does not vanish into thin air mm. eh, and sits and presides the ndc for the love of god and for the sake of the youth of this country mm. they should pass the e levy so that we can get money to support the youth of this country I see well so i'm reading off the uh, ghana web ghana web page um, a story done yesterday 11th of january 2022 it says government must slash setting expenditures to justify imposition of e-levy more taxes uh, npp mp that's um patrick yaobuama his mp for kankwe north constituency says the member of parliament oliver you need to pull that up for me the member of parliament for kankwe central mr patrick yaobuama has opined that the government of ghana has a responsibility to cut down on its expenditure and be transparent to the people if they want the people to pay more taxes the legislature posited that government must be accountable it must make judicious use of the generated revenue. Ghanaians will have no concern paying more taxes to help develop the country. He was responding to the brouhaha surrounding the introduction of the controversial e levy by government. The Minister for Finance, Kedo Furiata, presenting all of that. Um, and, and this is what Mr. Buama is saying. He says that you cut down your expenditure so that people can, can support you in your, uh, what do you call it, your quest for more funds. And by the way, the MP is an mm. MPP MP. He is. And that's our attitude. Mm. We mean the, the, the we mean well for this country. Mm. We are not like the NDC MPs who will say that party first before before country. 
Mm. You see, they mm. used to say that mm. I was with uh, Mr. Sam George on your set mm. uh, when he used to be on the other side. He, he, what? he said that his attitude is that he, it is party first. He went to parliament on the ticket of his party. Mm. So he would do party first before the country. Mm. But when you listen to the MPP MPs, the sense you get is that it is Ghana first before party. Would you listen and, to and, him? And, and he's I giving, agree. He's I giving agree. advice. I agree. Cut I down agree. on expenditure. I agree. There are many areas that we can look at. I don't understand why we have to. Which for instance, areas, for example? I'm giving you one. I don't understand why every four years we have to renew. Mr. We have to re uh, replace Mr. Mohammed's fleet of vehicles. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. As former president, you do. You I do, do that for Mr. Kufo. I don't. Kufour I don't. Well. I don't understand why we should do that for mm -hmm. Mr. Kufo and for for Mr. John Mahama. Mm -hmm. For two, I don't understand why we should do that every four years. Okay. So it's an area we can look at, mm -hmm. and there are many many other areas that we can Luxurious look at. So, travel. so 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 uh, yeah. We, if you say that we should count down on the on the on the number of travels. We may have to look at okay, what do we get when the president travels? When the president goes out and brings COVID vaccines, okay, mm. in the in the face of global uh, shortages, mm. he travels and he brings vaccines to keep us alive. If you feel that it is wise to say that let him not travel because you want to cut down mm. so that we don't get vaccines and Ghanaians die, mm. if that's your prescription, convoy, for, that's your problem. Convoy, yeah. long convoys. No, no. <clears throat> whose convoys? Long convoys. Of who? My convoy. No, you don't have a convoy. Do you use a convoy? No, that's why I'm surprised. You're not you supposed say. to use it because yeah, so, so whose we'll convoy? The president's convoy. No, no, the president's example. convoys are not long. He okay. has the shortest convoy in our history. Really? Fado. No, no, no. He does not like it at all. Look, what happens is that when the president is traveling mm. along the line, many people join. Okay. So they are not part of the president's convoy. Mm. Okay. I have joined the How president's convoy. How many cars convoy. are in the president's convoy? Well, I, I am. I'm not allowed to talk. This is a national okay, security right. matter. I cannot disclose it, but I'm well aware of it because as How information minister, I, I'll give you, I'll as, give you as information mm, minister, I, 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 I deputy information I minister, I stood, <laughs> I stood on top of that Edugi, information, Edugi and I can report to you. Thank you. Well, he, he's he's Thank giving you. himself time now. Thank you. you took let's uh, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> hear let's hear a few messages now, and then we will come Edugi back. Edugi determines to, how to, how much time he uses to fifteen to. And he's giving me ten. You have spoken actually for fifteen minutes because you kept asking questions. Good. That's why he. Okay. But he will so, ask you one so question. Go ahead. You believe you. Go he will ahead. ask you one question. Go I ahead. The man deserves better. Let's hear the messages. <laughs> okay. Bella. Okay. All right. Sorry. I was just reading a few of the messages. <laughs> Good morning, Johnny Hughes. I always appreciate you and the entire TV3 crew. Johnny, it's you, the journalist and civil servants, that will move this country forward. I think the perfection of journalists and civil servants is what will make Ghana uh, a better place. Journalists and civil servants should say the truth, and that truth will save and make Ghana a better place. That's Abu Spain, Medina. Mustafa from Lower Manya Krobo says, from the look of things, the guys at the presidency don't allow Nana Kufada to watch or listen to Ghanaians. Uh, to the Ghanaian media channels. The president recently, uh, the president's recent speeches are becoming ridiculous. Three years down the line, no textbooks for the new curriculum, and here we are with the Utah gun strike. This government has successfully collapsed the education system. My guest, Honorable Davido and Captain Joshua Akamba Mustafa from Loa Manya Krobo. Okay, um, good morning, Johnny. God bless you for speaking the truth. You're speaking for the poor and the vulnerable in society. Ghanaians are suffering indeed. That's Osman Bukurisung in Tamale. A.U. Farouk from Tamale North says, Good morning to you all. In fact, the year has started bad for the university students. When will government listen to UTAG? This government is trying to ruin our future um, uh, with regards to being unable to negotiate with UTAG for their demands. Okay. Good morning, TV3 and Johnny. Uh, please kindly ask both the NDC and MPP reps when NAPCO trainees will be paid our four-month stipends. We're suffering in hunger and hardship. That's Isaac Opoku from Kumasi. Well, for Hill Ghana, it's more than even the four months. It's seven months plus four uh, or so. Good morning, Johnny. Sometimes I laugh about the NAPCO arrears. I'm a registered general nurse and I've worked for nine months without pay. I'm dying slowly. Joe from Sunyan uh, in, well, TV3 New Day. Good morning, Johnny. Uh, great Johnny Hughes. The head of local government service is about to do the unthinkable by embarking on mass. Okay, I lost the messages, unfortunately. Johnny, I'll just pass it on to you. Uh, for some reason, I've lost the messages now. Okay, sorry about that, uh, Bella. And uh, well, a few of that I've gotten on my uh, phone as well. Kakra Samoa and... Um, uh, Opremu Woyomi and also Ambassador Sampia have sent a few out to read them uh, quickly. Now, uh, Kakra Samoa says, uh, enjoying your discussion. Unfortunately, journalists generally in this country have not raised issues with the election of the presidential nominee as NMC chairman three times under Kufado. Yes, he was duly elected, but is that what the constitution contemplated? Um, 
that the president nominee be the directing the directing influence in an institution that's supposed to be immune from presidential governmental control and influence. This is not necessarily to question whether the incumbent chairman as a person cannot hold a position in his own right. Uh, and it seems to me that this is the reason why even the media commission is not protesting as loudly as it should. If government has money for media capacity building, why not give the money to the media commission to carry it out? Ambassador Zampiali says, Honorable Haji Deng, we are not saying that journalists do not need uh, training or upgrading. What we are against is the venue of the training and the content of the training program. Since when did Mensha become a public training center? Um, well, that's what the launch was done. Hold on for me. If the government wants to train journalists, why choose Mensha and not Ghana Institute of Journalism or School of Communication Studies? Well, we don't know the venue yet. Um, the laptops given by the NDC is not what is at stake here. What is at stake is the sadly, uh, sadly using the power of the Asantehini to influence media content in Ghana. Secondly, the Ministry of Information should publish the criteria used to select the journalists um, at Manchat Palace and also publish the list of those who were selected. They should also make available the videos of the training program. How can the media be independent when all those who have to speak pow uh, to power, a uh, truth to power, have been appointed to juicy positions in government? That's what he's saying. Um, Opemi Woyeme says the uh, Akufado led government has yet again demonstrated that it came to develop the youth in the country. With this youth innovative, uh, a great plus the implementation of the youth start, we hope to boost the human capital of young Ghanaians. Another first by the NPP administration, yeah, Opimu yeah. Yome says, regards to you, Pius, and Honorable uh, Kwesi Efri Farmers, MP for Amasaman. And then Ambassador Sampi Ali comes and says, Honorable Ajide, do not worry about politicization of issues. We have a compilation of videos and pictures of your good self while MPP was in opposition, <laughs> holding you to ransom or preventing you from collecting revenues for frivolous expenditure. Is questioning. Eduji, take your uh, time. I think my regards to Sampi Ali. Sampi Ali is watching. He's my father. He's watching. From the end. Uh, <laughs> but this morning he's, he misfired. <laughs> you see, on this particular sex, mm. young persons appeared with Bella mm. to narrate the ordeals that they've gone through. And an apple. Correct. You are going to put Bella mm, on the spot. Mm, mm. And, in this, and in this spot. conversation, the young people spoke about the fact that the finance minister, mm. the president, have all indicated a certain number of persons that have been given permanent employment. Mm -hmm. One says 43,000, the other says 49,000. Mm -hmm. But 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 uh, did you, allow, allow him allow him. Allow him. They, it's, they, not, it's not they, yours to. But, but they, did they, they tell him that? They, and then then they see he kept, they were unemployed. He kept quiet. No, did they tell him? No, that? no, no. He kept quiet. Did for they you. tell Bella? I, I think that you need to be fair to him. He kept quiet for you. He never. No, he interjected the future. Even when you entered to engage him, he asked you no, to continue. No, he interjected no, no, the future. No, no, no. I, I will not permit that. But I'm that saying that those young people. No, no, no. You don't. You don't have. Please put files off. They were unemployed. Put your microphone is off. Put his mic off. Let's go. Thank you. You had 15 minutes. Be fair. These young people use this platform. I heard mm. Dr. Anya, mm. the head of NAPCO, on the same platform in white, basically tell young people what he believes government is going to do. Today, it has become a fiasco. How? It has become paid over four months allowances already in arrears. But you see, my brother went on, yes, mm. left with nothing. When a visionary comes out with an intervention like yes, mm -hmm. you come and you decide to change the name into NEIP for political branding purposes, right? But it's the same intervention. And... Yes. Allow him yes. He doesn't even remember. Who yes. They yes. can't hear. Nobody can hear you. So. No yes man. was involved. Why would you do that to me? In building. Allow him to talk. Yes <laughs> was involved in building even greenhouses. Mm. Where? The village at Dowenya. <laughs> right. When this government came, they decided to abandon it. That project alone. Are you sure? Yes. It is recent that they they and by which time almost three years had elapsed. The truth of the matter it's is that that intervention alone had the capacity mm. to engage over 500 young people who will not have waited for today. But you see, Johnny, our friends in the MPP should draw a distinction between sloganeering and providing good governance. How do you mean? 
What I'm saying is that you come and you tell us that, okay, I'm bringing NAPCO to employ 100,000 people, correct? That's right. Then in the budgetary allocation, you said an APCO beneficiary will be taking 700 cities. In the budget, you provided 600 million Ghana cities, budgetary allocation for the intervention. So simple arithmetics will tell you that there is no way you can even get 100,000. There's a way for media budget review? Absolutely. No, Allow the me media fire, budget please. review had nothing to do. The what? budget itself is there. Hmm. And the outer you can review it media. Oh, allow your bank is off. Oh, Nobody can hear you. No, but that's what you are telling him. No, so allow me to moderate. Self control. He kept quiet. Self control. Esso Jaman. Esso Jaman deserves. It's only fair. Esso Jaman deserves better. We, we need to go. Sports is we on. We. Esso Jaman deserves better. But allow see, me to ask my questions, please. This. Let me go on the specifics. We have to stop him. Mm. You raise a very important point, and my brother says, "Oh, NDC." We are not interested in the good governance. It is zero-sum game. It is politics. But for, us. but for the direct intervention of the NDC minority, would you have had a conversation on Sputnik? It took the minority no. to demand the bipartisan probe. Mm. That resulted in this. No. Now, we are talking about government cutting down on expenses mm. to ensure that the taxpayer get value for money. All right. We were in this country. When our president decided to travel from here to the United States of America for an award mm. by paying $14,000 per hour for 11 hours, 22 That's hours. Today, to as we speak, allow him to, to mislead us and to tell as, to as tell a people, truth. as a people, our time, our time is as finished. a people, mm. we expect true. accountability. Mm. The, the, the minister. Mm. Oh, Tyo, stop, it. stop it. No, but you must stop the minister. The minister. You are not being fair. The national security. You are not being fair to everybody else. No, because you are not The national security minister do. had come out to say that mm. the presidential cost, uh, the travel cost, is a national security, a national matter. security right. matter. Yes. Meanwhile, what's your difficulty? Meanwhile, right? you know what they have done? No. In 2019, the media budget, mm. the minister of finance, the deputy friend, chief of uh, uh, chief of staff mm. appeared before mm. parliament and indicated that between January September 2019, deal with the issues we the have cost raised. of presidential travel was okay, sixteen eight we, we million have to Ghana. Go, we have to go now. My, my no, final question to you. Sorry about that. My final question to you. With oh. So you you start, with for example, uh, is all of this is in, uh, Oliver? Forgive me one minute. All of this is hinged on the e levy. Now, Mr. Boama is saying that cut down expenses so that people can No, so be, that is where justified. I am coming He's that. redirecting. You are talking, about, redirecting. You are talking about cutting down expenses. Right. When this government, in the 2022 budget presentation, mm. the chief of staff's office is telling us that President Akufado has used 148 million Ghana cities. Mm. From January to September okay. on operational enhancing costs. Thank you. What does that mean? Lawyer oh, Digital you. Macro so is a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. Also, Pius Enam Hajide is uh, the boss at the NYA. Gentlemen, thank you, Edigi. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll take a, a break now. We'll return with sports and some more conversations here. We're going to Legon. We'll talk about the accommodation issues. We spoke about it last year, the year before, the year before that. Nothing seems to have changed. The students are uh, loitering about and they are hoping for, for some respite. We'll see you after the break. Thanks to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my outfit. Really, can I make a